So as I was uh, working with these texts this week, I couldn't help but um, look at that Ephesians text, and it says several times stuff about not drinking too much wine and not not sing hymns instead of drinking songs. But we are we are praising God. It, it made it made me miss the beer and hymns that we managed to do one time. But anyway, that said, let us pray. Holy and beloved God, oil the hinges of our heart's doors that they may swing gently and easily to welcome your coming. Amen. So we have spent quite a bit of time over the last month on John 6. Who is just saturated with John 6? I'm a little saturated with John 6, so we're, we're, we're kind of not going to touch on John 6 right now. So what? So those of you who are not saturated by John 6, the bread of life, relationship through communion, relationship with, uh, with our church community, uh, your responsibility is, as bearers of the bread of life and the message that gives you, not to negate it at all, but there's John 6, more or less. <laughs> Dick and Kathy probably couldn't give you more if you asked them after worship. There you go. It's the joy of uh, being former pastors in a congregation, my friends. <laughs> but instead, we're going to go to Ephesians. So Ephesians um, has kind of jumped out at me this week as uh, this piece of wisdom, these instructions on how to live and live fully. And I will, I'll, I'll be a little honest and vulnerable with you right now that um, yesterday was my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. And there is this thing about grief. You know this, right? There is this thing about grief that you never know when it's going to hit. And my mom died six years ago and boy, it hit like a ton of bricks. And then I thought about, and I, this is not to, meant, to, meant to guilt poor Tim here, but um, The Water is Wide, which we sang at their 30th wedding anniversary. It's all good, we'll get it another time. Um, but that uh, the wisdom of a long-term, good, most of the time, relationship. We talked last week about our relationships as um, the res responsible one for sharing this bread of life, for sharing the body of Christ, for being in relationship with one another in community. We talked about also how difficult it can be sometimes to welcome the stranger and that we each one of us probably have a different way to approach approach somebody visiting church, approach somebody coming into the community. There's ways uh, that we do this all differently. I was with a uh, dozen or so clergy on Friday, and one of them said we were, as, as clergy do, as probably teachers do and therapists do, we, we sat around a table and we go, how are we going to handle this? And somebody said, you do realize that every one of our churches at this point Every single one of our churches is essentially a new church start. That we have lived through this life-altering experience, and we are a different group than we were 18 months ago. So who are we going to be as we go forward? How do we take the wisdom of Scripture that little bit of John 6 and the, the, uh, the body, and, body and blood of Christ, the um, bread of life, infuse it in our bodies and souls and the ways that we do mission and ministry, and move it into whatever the church is becoming. And some of you I've, I've talked with a little bit that as much angst and anxiety as we have have had and continue to have going through COVID and what that means to the life of the church that I see 
I am optimistic. I may not necessarily always look calm and together, but I am optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> and that I see and it, we can make investments in the community through looking at our experiences with the scripture, our experiences with the great legacy that we have as a church community and what that looks like moving forward. So we are about to have a, uh, a, a deacons meeting, deacons retreat after worship today. And I'm going to ask them these same questions, and we'll have a longer discussion later. Uh, the deacons and I will have a longer discussion about this, but I just want you to sit with a couple of questions um, as we prepare to cross fingers, toes, and everything else, prepare to be in person inside the sanctuary in worship in a couple of weeks. Prayers, and anyway, prayers abound. Uh, but ponder for a moment, and you can share some of these two. What have been your key learnings over the last 18 months? And you can just sit with it. You don't, you don't have to share it. What have been your key learnings? How to worship God alone. How to worship God alone. <coughs> Holly. Much I miss all my friends. I know, I missing friends. The difference between loneliness and solitude. The difference mm -hmm. between loneliness and solitude. Missing. Love is the ground. I was your grand. I heard there was another voice there too. Surely. Um, missing that that sense of, of, of group and, and fellowship in in worship. That that solid solidarity. So, so missing sense of group in worship and solidarity. Cherry. There's a lot that, well, here you go. You answer the next question. What'd she say? She asked, there's a lot that I don't need and a lot that I don't need to do. <laughs> so these are questions both for your personal lives and the church too. So Sherry, it was a great, um, great connection to the next one. What are the things that you are letting go? Family possessions since the 1880s. <laughs> Family possessions since the 1880s. <laughs> Fabulous. Carol. I think aging has already taught a lot of those, especially what Sherry um, says. So, you know, as you age, you pare down. Yeah, so as you age, you pare down. So I would, I would also add to that I think because we're, we've been limited and have boundaries about who we can see when and how we gather and when, it's the um, where do I invest my risk? So where, mm -hmm. where do, you know, with yeah. before yeah. vaccines, it was where do I invest my exposure to whatever and it, be it with an outing or a person or whatever how do you invest your risk and there's uh, there, there's a piece in there too probably with that last question um, a great opportunity to reevaluate self-care which I am certain that I'm not the only one that sucks at that I just guessing 
What should we do differently? That's the next question. What should we do differently? Forget the small potatoes and realize it's all small potatoes. So realizing everything's small potatoes. Old church outside. So I, 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 I know. I told Anne. I said, so we're going to do this next year, right? Or we're going to be back at your house at some point, right? We want a lease. <laughs> we want a lease with Anne Zawan. More singing. More singing. Here, here. And here's a big one. What do we need from one another? Patience. Time together. Time together. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. I'll add in there extravagant welcome. Got to get a buzzword in there someplace. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and just... What did she say? She, she said that Old South does a lot of those pretty well. I, I think I heard, that's what I heard. Um, but the more you sit with those, um, there may be, there may be th some things that you will be doing, thinking differently as we approach whatever next stage this is, both in your personal lives and as a church, that focusing on how we are community, why we are community, that's a big one too, right? Why are we church? And a lot of you have very different answers, but that, that question is going to be crucial to our sustainability. Why are we church? And why are we a church at 235 Main Street? And what makes us church? And how do we be the body of Christ, the bread of life? Here we've got John 6 in there a little bit, just a little bit. Um, how do we be that body of Christ, the bread of life, as this church that we are and the church that we are becoming. So all of that has something to do with Ephesians, I think. So you can ask, you can ask Kathy and Dick about John 6, um, but don't ask them about um, um, my uh, interpretation of the scripture. Anyway, um, <laughs> but we, I, I, <laughs> I like the plain, straightforward language in this Ephesians text from the message. Um, so watch your step. Use your head. I would add to use your heart because we are both a head and heart people. Sometimes we get so centered in being the head people that it's, we forget how much we are heart people too. So use your head and your heart. Make the most of every chance you get. And how about this one? These are desperate times. These are desperate times. We might not be as quite as desperate as we were a year ago, 18 months ago, in the beginning throes of all of this, but we're still trying to figure out how to do this. And live into this next chapter and here's here's the other thing too we're tired a lot of us are very tired and the creativity to launch into doing the next new thing and being in in inventive and creative there's not so much energy as there was 18 months ago so watch your step use your head use your heart make the most of every chance you get and I, and I said at the beginning, I, I had a little trouble with this, 
Um, so I'll adjust it a little bit. It says don't drink too much wine. I would say everything in moderation. <laughs> I don't feel it cheapens your life. Again, everything in moderation. Drink the spirit of God. Yes, in buckets and buckets and buckets. Sing hymns and drinking songs. Sing songs from your heart. That's where the heart comes in again, to Christ. Sing praises over everything. Every excuse for a song. Whatever precautions are needed in there, do it. In the name of Christ. So it's a bit of wisdom. It's this chunk of step carefully. Use your head and heart. Care for one another as you would that you are each parts of this body of Christ, that you each are nourished by the bread of life, that you are each called out to be disciples of Christ. For God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. Thanks be to God.